Hello, I want to welcome you to this episode of I Opener This Week with Samuel Temitokwe Akande. On this week episode, we will be talking on the, this subject, whom should I marry? Whom should I marry? This is an age-long question that almost every young person, especially if they are godly, have been thinking about, have been praying about, have wanted to know whom should I marry? We are going to be looking at that today. Like I said, we will be looking at whom should I marry. Uh, and uh, before we go into whom should I really marry? Of course, I'm going, this is going to be two episodes. Uh, this is going to be part one, and uh, the part two, I will be addressing the whom should I marry in proper. But first, I want us to look at uh, the don'ts to avoid when considering whom to marry. The don't to avoid when considering whom to marry. And on the second part, we'll be looking at the do's. But these are the don'ts. Uh, first on the list is don't rely on dreams. Don't rely on dreams. The first way invented by people over the years is dream. People tell you, in fact, some pastors will tell you, if you are going to know whom to marry, you should uh, dream about the person. Uh, when you are dreaming, ask God to show you in the vision, in your dream, whom to get married. And many, it has been invented for several uh, years back. In fact, in the 90s, while growing up, uh, I found out that many people, many young people then were able to, to use it for themselves. Uh, in fact, maybe I should say against themselves. I've seen, I was able to see a sister using it for against another brother and asking the brother, telling the brother that he, she is interested in that I had a dream about you and uh, I, I, I believe the Lord want me to be your wife. Uh, these, I was, you know, the common one, if you are used to that. Uh, I was fetching water, and you came around, and you helped me to complete the fetching of the water. And there's another one that comes like, uh, there, there are some men that were running after me, and they wanted to hurt me. And here, I saw Brother Michael coming around, and he, he scared them away, and they were able to leave me. And when Brother Michael was going, in my dream, the Lord told me, that's your husband. That's uh, Many of them use it that way, and unfortunately, uh, it was a lie cooked up. And uh, 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 to, in order to get uh, someone to get married, maybe a woman or a man to get married, I'm telling you on to this episode, watch out. Don't rely on dream for whom to get married. The Bible makes us to understand in Hebrews chapter 1, verse, uh, if you look at that verse 1, uh, the Bible says, God, who at sundry times, and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. At in these days, last, in these last days, spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. God spoke, the Bible says, in diverse manners to our fathers. But in these days, you know what God speaks through? You know what God uses to speak to us? The word of God. The Bible. Nothing more. That's how God speaks. So uh, in the second part of, the, of this episode, you will be looking. I'm going to tell you from the Bible, biblical point of view, how to know whom to marry. But what on this episode, the first on the list of what to watch out for, of what you shouldn't get yourself involved with, or what you shouldn't rely on, is don't rely on dream. The second thing to avoid on when considering whom to get married, the, the second don't to avoid when considering whom to get married to is don't take names to preach out, to pray on. It has become habit of many young people. They, they, they take names to their pastors and say, Pastor, pray on this name. Whom should I choose among these names? 
In some cases, some we even take about three, four, five names to a preacher. It happens most of the time uh, with our sisters. Uh, uh, they will take names of men and, and take it to, to a pastor. In fact, they, many don't even take it to their pastors. They take it to different pastors and say, hey, pastor uh, or prophet, would you pray on these names and choose me whom to marry among this, this name? Think along with me. Do you think it's okay for someone to bring about three or four names to a pastor to pray on without being in a relationship with them? Or is he or she in a relationship with those people and he's saying, who should I choose among the people that I'm in a relationship with? There must be something wrong with such a person uh, for taking about three or four or five names to a preacher to pray on and say, choose among them. Are you in a relationship with them? If you are not in a relationship with them, if Patrick chooses someone that you don't really, are not really used to, but just because the person talks with you or is friendly with you, you think I should know if I should marry that person. That means you are going to be the one that will be pushing yourself on such a person. Uh, that will not work. And, but I'm saying this, don't take names for pastor. Your, the job of our pastors is to help you to, to open your eyes to sites that you are blinded to, to guide you, to pray with you, to give you biblical instructions on whom to get married, is not our job to say, bring names, let's pray, and say, this is who God wants you to get married to. Go and get married to the person. We can pray with you and guide you and tell you from the word of God that this is the type of person to marry, but not us. We are not the one. It's not the job, pastor's job to choose the names of the person for you to marry. Don't. The Bible makes, in, in, I, I've even got to know this. There was a time something like that happened that even a, 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 a Christian, a, 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 a godly Christian, I suppose, uh, took about two names to a pastor. And among those names uh, is uh, one Muslim, is a Muslim a name. Uh, among those names, we have a Muslim name that was included, took two names to the pastor and one Muslim and the other uh, 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 a Christian. And when the pastor prayed, the pastor prayed and chose the Muslim. And the lady said, oh, that's a Muslim. And the pastor said, well, God told me that you are the one that will change the life of that uh, Muslim. So don't worry, just walk at it. That's the one that God has chosen for you. The Muslim wasn't saved. The Muslim wasn't separated. The Muslim, there was nothing about that. But the pastor prayed, the prophet, I guess, prayed and said, that's the one that God has chosen for you. And I can tell you today, the lady is living a separated lifestyle from her husband. Because eventually, they, they, they got married, they have children, but they are separated today. You know what the Bible has already made us to understand? In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness? And what com communion at light with darkness? And you can continue downward. But this pastor said, there's a, a, there, there's a fellowship between darkness and light. That's the mistake she made in thinking that the pastor is the one that's supposed to choose name for her. Of course, like I said, separated, living a single life because they were never compatible. Not only in any other areas, but us specifically in the area of their religion. The truth is this. It's not your pastor's job. It's not our job to tell you this is the person to get married to. It's our job to open your eyes to what the Bible says about whom you are to get married to. Oh, am I saying don't get your pastor involved? Don't tell your pastor's wife about your relationship? No. But I'm saying tell them, help, let them guide you, but not them to choose and say, marry Bra Shegun, marry Bra Mark, marry Bra so, 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 marry sister, Fran uh, sister Francisca, marry. No. Instead, let God direct you, which we are going to be looking at in the second part of this episode. The thought to don't to consider when choosing whom to get married to is don't be blinded by your future ambition. Don't be blinded by your future ambition. Many young adults are blinded by their ambition, by their future ambition. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis. for example, they decide to say, I'm going to choose someone that will be able to pull my family 
out of poverty. It happens between a man and a woman. A woman can say, I want to marry a husband that will be able to help my family take us to greater heights. How I'm from a poor background and I want a, a man that is rich or that will be able to take me how. I want a man at least that is well to do, that will be able to take us, that will take care of me and take me out of poverty and take care of my family. The same thing goes for a man. A man can think that the same way. I've seen men do that. I want a family, a rich family that if I marry the lady, the the father, my father-in-law can help me get a job. My father-in-law can help me get something or get one thing or the other done. Hey, I'm from a poor background. I, I can't remain poor. We have issues like that. And in many cases, many of them always fall into other wrong things. Of course, they are, they are marrying for wrong reasons. So definitely, if those things are no more there, they are not going to be what they're supposed to be. And uh, if those things are there, they may have those things and never have happy marriage, to have happy married life. And, and you can see what the Bible says in, uh, in, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 6. The Bible says, But godliness with contentment it is it's a great gain. But godliness with contentment is a great gain gain. So uh, it's the best for you to not be directed by your future ambition. Ah, uh, what I'm going to get from this. In fact, don't think, what am I going to, what's my gain in this marriage? What by gain? What am I going to get? If you get into marriage because of what you are going to get, if you don't get those things, you will be discouraged. You will be dissatisfied and your marriage won't be what it's supposed to be. Don't get blinded by your future ambition when choosing whom to marry. By God's grace, we will we'll continue this episode. The part two of this episode will be next week by God willing. And then if there's any question, uh, because this is a short video, where I can't clarify, I can't clarify everything, I can't cover everything. If you have any question, you can WhatsApp me on the number on your screen. Till next week, God bless you.